So in, in doing this work and talking to a lot of converts or potential converts or people who are looking into the Catholic Church or even evangelicals who are, are debating or arguing the things the Catholic Church believes, one thing I encounter a lot is people using the Church Fathers in a way that they should not be used truthfully on things like the Eucharist, the real presence of Christ. We as Catholics believe that in the elements of communion, the bread and the wine that Jesus is in a miraculous way actually present there. Things like baptism, the meaning of that, or salvation, or confession, or the priesthood, or the nature of the church. On these things, oftentimes there are simple misunderstandings and misinformation about what the church, the Catholic Church, actually believes. That's the most common thing I find. But you also find well-meaning Protestants, well-meaning evangelicals, who who misuse the church fathers. I give you an example. So. As a reader of the Church Fathers, you can find Church Fathers that say all kinds of different things. And you can find Church Fathers that say things that sound very Protestant. And some Protestants take these and call them proto-Protestants. And say, look, this, this Church Father here, Augustine here, sounds like a Protestant. So he must be a forerunner for the Reformation, or a forerunner for not believing in the real presence of Christ in the sacraments. But this is a fundamental misunderstanding of how to use the Church Fathers. Because... You can find church fathers that, that say all kinds of things and sound in all kinds of different ways at times. But what you need to recognize, and I think this is so fundamental, is that these church fathers were Catholics. They were bishops in many cases. And they ultimately, at the end of the day, whatever they wrote or said or, or, or imagined or kind of speculated, they submitted to the will of the church, the Catholic church, in fact, and it was at church councils, not church fathers by themselves in, in a room writing with, with a pen and paper on a scroll or whatever, what have you. It was the church councils that decided on doctrine and dogma and what the church believed, just like the very first church council we see in the, in the book of Acts, the Council of Jerusalem, deciding to let Gentiles into the church, right? This is where the church makes its doctrine, its dogma, and shapes its beliefs through that authority wielded from Christ through the apostles and their succession with the bishops. Now, many of these church fathers were bishops themselves, right? And they ultimately bent to the will of the councils. No matter what they may have written or wrote or said or speculated, even those like Jerome, Augustine, some of these more cantankerous church fathers. And Jerome was very cantankerous, we know this. But even Jerome submitted to the will of the church in the council's ultimately. So you might find church fathers that you can quote out of context all day long and say, look, this church father here sounds Protestant, sounds evangelical. But the danger of that is forgetting that these church fathers were part of the Catholic Church. And ultimately, at the end of the day, they were Catholic. And the Catholic Church is what they believed in. It's what we believe in today as Catholics, in a line from Christ down through the apostles and their successors, no matter what one or two people, no matter what I say or speculate myself, I submit my will to where I believe Christ put that authority in the Catholic Church.